In this video, we're gonna talk about the One Wheel GT. We're gonna dip my one wheel in muddy waters. We're going to GTR a one wheel GT. We're going on a group ride and we're gonna change the tire on one of my one wheel XRs. Mega fights back. <laughs> I was trying to go for a one wheel ride, but freaking started to rain out of nowhere it was super sunny and now all of a sudden it's raining and there's thunder but anyways welcome to my channel Proyecto Next welcome to my blog if you're new to this channel I hope that by the end of this video I get to earn your subscription it's raining and there's thunder so I hope you guys enjoy it because I gotta run in peace Lucky me, I got to spend these rainy days shadowing one of the most experienced riders I know in the area, Bill. The moment you step into his property, you can tell this guy is a flow addict. If you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. See what I, I like use? how you built in the... Uh... Yeah, so that's my second one. This was the one I built first. I obviously didn't need the second one to have as much stuff. Yeah, so I built right in the charger. Uh, ooh, look at this little lip you did and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so it slides in, like that way it's like really easy to get down, like it doesn't matter if you mess up, it just slides right in. It just slides right in. It just slides right in. That's what she said! <laughs> It's raining, but it doesn't matter because I am here to witness the conversion of Bill's GT into a GTR. So what is GTR? Basically, GTR is the surgical process of removing a motor from a one-wheel GT's hub and transplanting it into the hub of a one-wheel XR. This is the host we are using for the GTR conversion. In addition to the 6 inch hub, the GT will be getting a fresh set of Grizzly bearings, Enduro tire and lifesavers. This being said, Bill did offer to replace the Vega tire on my XR with the tire on this hub. Bill did mention that a lot of Burris tires leak air, which explains the tire flower pots in his front yard. So he tested the tire for leaks before installing it on my board. I do not ride this board much because of how the Vega tire feels. So for me, a leaky tire is much better than the stock tire. Before retiring the Vega though, I did put in some miles on it with a 302 one wheel crew. Shot me through the heart, casting dice and roulette. The game was set right from the start. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna know, I don't want it anymore. I don't wanna go, don't wanna know, but I keep coming back for more. Crash it down and This ended up being our largest group ride yet. Nine of us showed up. We ended up getting some freebies from our local transportation department. Ate some wild berries. And when you spend all, all your money on the one wheel, so you gotta like forage for berries. And most importantly, got to share the stoke. We ended up with two pint riders, five XRs, and two GTs. This hobby is growing here in Delaware, and I am excited for what the future has for our crew. As always, if you live near the area, consider joining our 302 One Wheel Facebook group. The link is in the description. Back to the GTR conversion. Jeez. I will say the beat does break a little harder. Bill really ended up fighting with the Vega tire. After some struggle, he finally got it all. And the Vega fights back. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> like, no. I know you want to say this is dead to you, but... We're going to keep it just in case. First pop's coming.
Not bad, under 20. We popped the tire, slimed the Jonski, and got it back on the board. Access granted. Boom. Night and day. This tire is next level compared to the hard Vega tire. And look, not to say the Vega is a bad tire, but changing the tire on these boards gives you a completely different ride experience. You have to try it. And once you dump the Vega, trust me, there is no going back. On to removing the rotor from the XR's hub. The idea is to gently hammer down the rotor just enough to allow for a good grip when pulling it out of the hub. We pull it out, set it aside, and onto installing the Grizzly bearings. But before doing so, we pop off the old bearings. When installing the new bearings, we keep the PVC coupler inside the hub to protect the magnets. We're throwing this bearing in. We're pushing it out by the inner race, which you'd never want to do for something you want to keep. In order for the GTR conversion to work, the XR's hub needs a custom motor cover for the GT's rotor to fit properly. We press some fresh bearings and we are good to go. It's turn for the GT to enter the chopping block. Disclaimer, I am not showing you the GT's teardown for the interest of time, but I will provide you with a link to a decent tutorial on how to do it. So on the XR, most of the bolts are imperial. And then there's a couple places, like for example, the inner hub bolts use five millimeter, right? So they'll use a metric system, but most of it is using the Imperial system. The GT uses Torx, which is all based on the metric system. Metric. Oh, that's another thing. One other place where they use metric on the XR is on the bolts on the inside for the motor plate. Oh, that's ironic. Right? And so, but everything's metric on the GT except for the bolts that hold the motor plate on. Those use a 532. <laughs> so they went to the Imperial system, like WTF, Future Motion. Yeah. Taking out the GT's rotor is no different than what we saw earlier with the XR. One thing we did not like is that we discovered dirt right under the hub's cap. So things are getting in here. And to me, this is particularly concerning considering that not long ago I... Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. We had been getting summer thunderstorms in the area making it difficult to go out and float in the afternoon. So after a few sunny days in the 90s, I thought my local trails would be dry enough to float on. But boy was I wrong. What's messed up is that this is the second time my board takes a dive in this same puddle. Look, I learned my lesson and I will be avoiding this section of the trail when wet. The only thing that sucks is that this section has some cool features, but they are definitely not worth the one wheel. When I got home, I figured the last dip was bad enough that it was worth taking apart the GT. This will give me an opportunity to get familiar with disassembling the board and to hose it down literally so that I could get all the mud out. Is this going to void my warranty? What does the fox say? Well, that's not what the fox says, but it's the sound of a GTR coming together. Rotor in the hub, it's time to install the GTR adapter cover. The hub then goes into the fresh enduro tire and onto the lifesaver. We proceed to set the bead, we add some green slime, and we put the GT back together. Bill got to try the board first. Oh, God. <laughs> I wonder why they run this with such a long PSI. Remember, what did I put up in 16? Yeah. And it feels like it's so much higher. Oh, it's, oh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you can tell it's more carvy. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, it wants to ride flat. Like, you go up, it wants to come back to. Oh. Oh. No. 
on. I got to try the GTR and let me tell you that it was like I went from riding on a bowling ball to riding on a lifesaver gummy. Squishy, grippy, stable, gooey are the best words I can think of to describe the feeling of riding this tire. I want to take this time to thank Bill for letting me hang out with him and observe the process. Not to mention the free Burris shredded tire. And for all of you that made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Projecto Next. Oh, man. Talk about a dip.